California voters will select general election nominees across the state Tuesday ahead of November's midterm elections. So as part of our Local Matters series, we're examining the key races in the state that could impact the balance of power in Congress and the issues that are on the minds of voters there in California. Seema Mehta is a political writer for the Los Angeles Times, and she joins us now from L.A. to talk about what we can expect. Seema, the race for governor is getting national attention. Let's start there. You have Lieutenant Governor right. Gavin Newsom seen as a favorite uh, is this race for is this really a race for second place at this stage and who is in contention for that spot Right, it has turned into a race for second place because Gavin Newsom, quite frankly, he's been running for more than three years. He has enormous lead in the fundraising and the polls. So everyone is pretty much, you know, agreeing that he's going to come in number one. In, t in terms of number two, California, as you know, has a sort of unique uh, primary system where we don't do party nominations. It's instead, the top two vote getters move on to the general election regardless of party. So it could be two Democrats or two Republicans. Um, so the two people that are vying for that spot are Rancho Santa Fe businessman John Cox, who's a Republican, and Antonio Villaraigosa, who's the former mayor of Los Angeles and is a Democrat. Um, and John Cox received a real boost when President Trump endorsed his candidacy, um, which he did a couple weeks ago, and then he again tweeted about him today. Now, California is a crucial state for Democrats to perform well in if they hope to control the House in 2018. Right. Can you put into context what kind of performance from Democratic House candidates uh, is being kind of what we should look for? What would be a cause of concern and what mm -hmm. would be encouraging? Well, I mean, there are seven districts in California that have uh, been represented by Republicans for a long time, but that voted for Hillary Clinton in the 2016 presidential election. And so these are the districts that Democrats nationally are really targeting, thinking they have a shot because of demographic changes in the state, as well as Trump's presidency. Um, so. There's, there's a, because of that top two scenario that I mentioned earlier, we have these, in a couple of these districts, we have really, really big fields of candidates running with like multiple Democrats. And that, this is creating the scenario that the Democratic vote might be so split that two Republicans end up moving on to the general election. I think um, Representative um, Sir Congressman Rohrbacher's district is a great example of that because you have the Congressman who's been in D.C. for decades. And then you have another Republican, Scott Bow, who's pretty well known in Orange County, who's running against him. And then you have several Democrats. And, you know, and what we found out today that, you know, some Republicans Republicans have been sort of secretly pumping money into some of these districts to, boy, like both boost both of the Republicans in hopes of you know, shutting the Democrats out. And if, if Democrats can't flip a number of these seats, that presents a major obstacle in terms of their efforts to retake the House in November. Yeah, and it's fascinating to see that having too many good candidates on the on the Democratic side right. may end up hurting them because of this jungle primary mm -hmm. structure. What what right. issues though are driving people um, out to the polls? What what do people have high interest in mm -hmm. as far as the issues they're voting on? Right? Right now. Um, one of the things you're hearing a lot about, and this is, you heard this from Republicans and Democrats, um, the idea that life in the state is not, has gotten really, like, really much harder, that uh, the cost of living has gone up so much, the cost of housing has gone up so much, the level of homelessness is, is just, you just see it on the streets in every city in the state, um, the, the level of poverty, there are 8 million Californians living in poverty, including 2 million children. And you know, you, it's, it's remarkable, because although the Democratic and Republican candidates have very different solutions on how they want to deal with these problems, the, some of the, the things that they're saying are almost identical. Like, you know, my family's had to move out of state. My children can't afford to live and buy a house in our community. Um, so that's one of the main things that I hear a lot of voters talking about. We were showing a graphic right now about the impact of the tax law on your own taxes. About 31% mm -hmm. of respondents right. in our battleground tracker said uh, it's impacted them for the better, 20% roughly for the worse, 42% uh, saying not, no, 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 no impact, uh, not much impact so far. Mm -hmm. the Republicans were hoping to ride the positivity right. people feel about the tax reform bill um, into office during the midterm elections. Is that the case in California? It doesn't appear well, we don't to be yet so. Because, you know, the tax law hasn't, it hasn't actually gone into effect yet. But, you know, when I was talking about some of those districts that Democrats are, tar are targeting, um, three or four of them are in Orange County. And Orange County has really high housing prices. And the state in general has really high state and local taxes. So some of the reforms that are part of the tax reform plan is going to hit places like that especially hard. And that was one mm -hmm. of the things that, while this tax plan might be uh, popular with Republicans across the country, there are certain states, high tax states like California or New Jersey or New York, where it can have an adverse effect. And so so it's Republicans there, I think, uh, I've heard, I've spoken with many Republicans there who are not happy about that plan. Yeah, Although they're happy about other things that President Trump has done, such as right. judicial nominations, that kind of thing. Well, we'll be keeping a close eye on your state. Good luck in your long night ahead. Seema Mehta joining us from Los Thank Angeles. You.